Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and today I wanted to walk you through one of our two ton per hour turnkey systems we have set up here. And I'm going to walk you through the different machines, and then uh, I'll talk about different setup options. So the whole system starts here with an 8 by 12 inch jaw crusher module. The raw ore gets fed into the hopper here, which is about 8 feet high. The feeder vibrates the material down into the jaw crusher, where it crushes down to about 3 quarter inch minus. This jaw crusher can do between two and five tons per hour, depending on the size of the jaw gap. Once it's crushed, it comes down here onto this conveyor belt and comes up into this fine ore feeder here. And when you're running ore, you want it as fine as you can get it, so the, the close setting on the jaw crusher is perfect, right about that three quarter inch minus. This is just a holding bin for the crushed ore. There's a magnetic feeder down here that's adjustable so you can very nice and evenly control the feed rate from the fine ore hopper onto this conveyor belt that takes the crushed material from the jaw crusher up into this 24 by 16 inch hammer mill. This hammer mill has 24 hammers in it and starting here and wrapping all the way underneath 180 degrees is a screen and we laser cut slots that are about 0.8 millimeters and so as the hammer mill crushes the, the ore from the jaw crusher, it comes out here onto this pan at about 30 mesh minus. We run the hammer mill with a little bit of water to keep the dust down and to make a nice slurry down onto our shaker table here. The slurry comes down into this distributor trough. The white water bars here flow water down onto the shaker table. The material comes down over these grooves. The gold and heavy material gets caught in the grooves. The shaker table brings the gold, sulfide, silver, whatever you're trying to concentrate, down here onto the cleaning plane and down here into one, number one and number two concentrates. There's a number three concentrate spin here where most of your sulfides are going to go. There will be a splitter in there that you can adjust the cutoff between the number three middlings and the number four tailings. And then the tailings will flow down into this spiral classifier where the, the heavy material, the larger pieces, settle down through this basin and get augered and dewatered out the classifier. The finest particles and the water will flow out one of these three discharge points. The highest is the finest discharge at about 150 to 200 mesh minus. This lowest one is the coarsest, about 80 to 100. And so depending on which one of these you use, you can control your final discharge to the tailings pond. The water and the final tailings go off into a settling pond, and the water can then be recirculated through the system. Now I want to talk a little bit about some setup options we have with this machinery. And there are really two different types of customers we typically get. One is going to set up the machinery outside at their mine and sometimes the terrain isn't flat or they need to build a pad. Uh, so I'll talk about that setup, but also there's a group of operators that like to set up inside a building. They're gonna be a toll mill, they're gonna gather material from a bunch of different mines and mill it in one spot. So I wanna talk about them separately. So first let's talk about uh, operators that are gonna set up outside at their mine in the dirt. And really the easiest way for them is to uh, build steps or pads at the various elevations they need. They just need to clear an area. The, the rough dimensions are if you're going to set it up in a big long line, the pad needs to be about 15 or 20 feet wide by about 60 feet long. If you're going to set it up in a horseshoe shape like we have here, you're roughly going to need about a 50 by 50 foot square. That does not include your tailings pond or, or where your water is going to go. So that's uh, in addition to that dimension. Now, when you're operating the equipment, really the key to uh, transferring the material from one machine to the other is the conveyor belt and the angle of the conveyor belt. And so if you tip the machine up too high, the conveyor belt, the, the material rolls back down the conveyor belt and it doesn't actually go up and you're gonna run into problems. We design our equipment to have an angle of about 20 degrees on our conveyor belts. You can actually increase that to up to 25 degrees and still have the material go up the conveyor belt, but any higher than that and you're going to run into problems. The jaw crusher module is probably one of the first places that you can actually gain some elevation. And by doing so, you can 
you can put a shim under the front half of the conveyor, uh, the jaw crusher module, to raise the conveyor up up to a maximum of about five additional degrees. This can be done with a, a piece of wood, a four by four, or a six by six, um, but you can actually gain quite a bit of elevation at the head of this pulley by just increasing the slope of the jaw crusher module. One thing you don't want to do with the jaw crusher module is elevate the whole thing. Because the jaw crusher is shaking and moving, you have a huge mass up here that's vibrating. You really need to keep at least one side of the jaw crusher on the ground or preferably the skids all the way on the ground like shown here. So the conveyor module or the fine ore feeder is really the best place to gain elevation or adjust the angle because the machine is static. It doesn't shake, it doesn't crush, it doesn't vibrate. It just has the conveyor transferring material. And so uh, in this situation, we've actually shimmed up the front about 12 inches and we've shimmed up the back another six to gain the elevation we need to go up into the hammer mill, but still be able to receive the material off the jaw crusher module. And so you can see here, this is another trick for gaining elevation. The conveyor moves fast enough where the material off the end of the conveyor actually shoots off the conveyor a little bit. So the head pulley on the conveyor doesn't need to be above the machine. It just needs to be about center line on the hopper to get the material into the, the feeder here for the hammer mill. That being said, if you're running wet material or damp material, you're going to have some that sticks to the conveyor belt. And so you may need to put in a little rubber scraper that uh, attaches here and can scrape the belt as the material is feeding into the hammer mill. So the 16 by 24 hammer mill really needs to be anchored in some way and we do that one of two ways. You can either, uh, if you're inside, you can either pour a large concrete block and attach the hammer mill to that block and anchor it down because the hammer mill does shake and vibrate quite a bit. The other option is to use uh, two or three concrete ecology blocks, and we'll take a look at those in a minute. But once you have the hammer mill anchored in place and weighted down, the shaker table can sit on the gravel. You need to weight the shaker table down if it's sitting on the gravel. It takes about 500 to 1,000 pounds. We typically use steel or bags of rocks that we mount onto the uh, frame of the shaker table. But once the shaker table is in place and leveled, then the material flowing off into the tailings needs to be received by the spiral classifier. In our previous videos of our one ton per hour system, we've actually dug a pit right here by the shaker table and put the spiral classifier down in the pit so that you have the elevation for the number four tailings to flow over this lip and into the spiral classifier. If you're inside or you may not have the ability to dig a pit, you can pipe the number four shaker table tailings off outside of your building or downhill somewhere outside where you can dig a pit and you can dig your pit for your spiral classifier uh, away from your shaker table if you need to. And that way you have your tailings and your tailings pond water can be very close. Whereas uh, it doesn't have to be right inside the building or right next to your shaker table. I mentioned earlier in the video about uh, an ecology block or a concrete block, and this is what we've come up with. These are uh, all over the place at the local cement plants and around here. This is uh, a two foot by two foot by six foot, what's called an ecology block, and it's just a solid brick of concrete. And this is what we prefer to mount our hammer mills on to get them up in elevation and to anchor them so when they run and vibrate, they still hold in place but it gets you the elevation to feed down onto your shaker table. So just wanted to mention about the ecology blocks. We can certainly provide these for you if you'd like. Um, they're very heavy and sometimes expensive to ship if you're going domestic, but if you're shipping overseas in a container, the weight isn't an issue. And uh, typically we have lots of room in a container where we can supply you with ecology blocks. This setup is the two ton per hour system. For the one ton per hour system, the elevation is a little bit different. We use a 16 by 12, hammer mill instead of a 24 by 16 and so you don't need to gain as much elevation. So in the one ton per hour system most of this equipment can be setting on the ground even in a building or on a flat pad. You may need to shim up the the conveyor on the conveyor module just a little bit to gain any elevation you need but the two ton per hour system may need a little bit of elevation change if you're running inside 
or if you're running out in a pad, you can step down those pads to gain the elevation you need. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video of our two ton per hour walkthrough. And uh, let us know if you have any questions or comments. You can give us a call or email us, all of which is in the description below. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.